G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. So today I've got a really quick and easy project. I've been wa wanting to make one of these for a while and uh, I was just in the mood so I quickly worked out a pattern for this little cottage needle book. So it keeps all of your needles and bits and pieces inside. It makes a fabulous gift for a, a sewer friend. Um, and we all move in those circles, don't we? And uh, so it's very quickly made up in fabrics and felt. Open that one up and you can see all those lovely bits and pieces, little storage places for absolutely everything there. And you can really put your own spin on this one, which I do love you all to do. So I have a free pattern for you and it's already in the description box below. I'll also put it number one in the comments so that it's easy to find. So all you'll need to do is click on that link and you can print out your free pattern templates on your own home printer. Do set your printer to print at actual size before you print out those templates so that they're absolutely spot on. So let's get busy sewing. Okay, let's run through what we're going to need to make our little needle book here today. So we start off with, we need our front cover. So this is going to be folded. So what I start with is a piece of interfaced felt and I'm using my usual woven cotton interfacing that's fusible because it's nice and flexible. That one is pressed on and my shape is cut from that. When you go to cut your pattern templates out, you'll see that you have to join the pieces. So it's just a flipped over piece. It's all there in your pattern templates that will explain it so that it gives you one big pattern piece. So that one is felt and that I've cut it from green because we're going to lay out our little cottage on the front and this little section of green is going to be left remaining which makes our little pine tree. So the next piece is the interior piece which is the inside of your needle cover little needle book and I've cut that one from what I call felt fabric so instead of adding interfacing I've added a piece of fabric using fusible webbing so I've actually got a video that shows you how to make felt fabric and also double felt that we're going to be using here today I'm going to put the link up the top there for you um, so you can check that out so it is just a matter of fusing your fabric to your felt with a sheet of uh, fusible webbing. So, and it gives us a lovely flexible, but uh, it's a heavier weight fabric to work with. Um, and it's great for this type of project. So you can see there, that is going to be the inside of our little needle book. So I do it with felt fabric because I like there to be pr a print on the inside. So while I've got that there, we'll show you what's going on the inside of our little needle book. We're going to be starting with a little pocket and that one is cut from double felt as I just talked about. Two pieces of felt joined together with fusible uh, webbing. Uh, and then we're going to be needing a little top section. I'm keeping to the little cottage shape and design. Very simplistic all the way through and very easy to follow. This one has fusible webbing on the back and I've just cut that one from felt. It's important that these pieces are cut from felt because they're going to be our little needle and pin holders. I've got another piece of double felt, which is your strip, your bar strip that goes across to where our needles are going to sit through. And your colors depend on what you're doing. I've kept the colors the same all the way through the project. And I've got a few key colors that I'm working with. So next we have a, we have a little print piece that's going to be situated here you can see that a couple of these pieces I've actually cut with my pinking shears and if you don't have pinking shears that's fine you can just cut them straight you could do a little decorative stitch around the edge if you like I just like that little little look of that pinked edge for anything like this so that one is just fabric with fusible webbing applied then we have another piece of double felt cut and you can see just the two long edges I've cut with my pinking shears. That one's going to hold that, cover that little top seam there. And I like to have a little strip of something across here so it can be lace, it can be braid, it could be rickrack, anything you like. It's just a nice little touch to add there. We're going to stitch that one on. That's what's going to hold that one into place. We're also going to be stitching a couple of 
bars across here so that we've got pockets to slip things through. We're going to be tucking these little lace edges underneath and we're going to be putting it on with a button either side. So we need buttons, all sorts of buttons for this project. So just a collection of all sorts of something uh, that coordinates with your project and your colours. And so on my little uh, my little fabric piece here we're going to be adding a little heart now this is just plain felt so there's no treatments on that one at all the reason for that is I don't want anything on there because we're going to be this is a cushioning for again for our pins I've got my next one my larger heart which goes over the top and that one has fusible webbing applied I'm not going to be fusing it but it just holds those edges together nicely so that one is going to be stitched on all the way around and it will give us a nice cushion to be adding more pins and so on you can also add any kind of text any little words you may have to this project I've just got a little one there that says joy um, and that will just be stitched on as well um, we're also going to be adding here we're going to have a, a lovely button here and we're going to create a little tag that hangs down here that we can go ahead add a couple of buttons on and we can add some more little little safety pins little trinkets that you want to keep at hand in your little needle book and that one we will need some pearl thread something like this one here I've got a little eight ply here that I'm going to use throughout this project and that will string to that little button I'm also going to be adding a little yo-yo flower. I'll show you how to make one of those. That's going to be on, going on one of these pockets. We're going to divide this one in half and we're going to add some more little decorative buttons on the side here. So really anything you like you can add to this little project. I'm sure there's all sorts of cute little sewing notions and little trinkets and so on that will really make this little one pop. So that's our interior. So we're just going to move that one out of the way and now we're going to talk about our exterior which is actually our cover for the front of our needle book and we start with quite a few little pattern pieces. Now if you're having trouble with cutting out or you're not sure about cutting out I'm going to put another link to a video I have about cutting and layout it gives you some good tips about getting nice clean and crisp edges and so we start with our little front cottage piece and I like to make that one in fabric something a, a print that's not too busy and it's got fusible webbing on the back and that one will line up there you can see that one there then we have a little top piece all of these pieces have fusible webbing applied we have our little peak there on our house I like to add a little lace trim underneath that little awning there it just gives it a nice little finish and adds to the whole look there we then need our skirting a little skirting board goes across here we're going to need our little steps that go on top there we have our little door and our little door has our little windows in it and we have our little grass section that will cover there and we have our top window with its little window pane in there and then we've got our side window which has our little cottage style window panes there now of course your window panes can be any color you like fabric works well because you can make it look like little curtains and of course they can be all different I'm going for all the same color there I'm also adding a little pot plant there and we're going to be adding another little felt uh, sorry little fabric yo-yo that's going to create the little top of our little plant and it gives it a nice 3d look there so just a fabric that would be suitable for that um, we have a little kitty so if you want to add kitty it's just a tiny little cut out of felt and 
he or she is just going to tuck in there nicely. It just gives adds a little bit of warmth and character to the project. So that's the front. So we're going to be doing a lot of our stitching on the machine. Most of the front is going to be done on the machine. You can do it by hand. I'm just trying to create a quick little product. This is going to be really good for markets. It's been be good for you to make and sell. And you're most welcome to do that. I forgot my little chimney. That's just going to tuck in underneath there too. You see that I've got my chimney and stairs coordinated there. So the only other thing that we're going to be needing for construction is uh, two pieces of mat board. Now mat board is a board that I get from picture framers and it's, it's usually used to mount paintings and it's very strong and uh, I get all the off cuts. So I've cut, alternatively you can just use any other type of very firm cardstock. You could use uh, stiffened felt for this but I just really do like the card stock I like the finished result to be quite firm so you need to cut two of those and we will be adding those a bit further along so first step for us here is to remove all of our front pieces we are going to start with the front of our little project and we're going to be adding our first piece so the first piece that we add today is on the right hand side of our felt side, our right side of our, of our fabric, um, is our little chimney piece. So that one goes on first and we're going to be pressing that one on, just line that one up and it should line up exactly with your pattern piece and extend a little so that the next piece covers over it. We just need to press that one into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. Now remember when you're cutting out all of your shapes for all of your detailing and your applique work that you need to reverse them to the direction that you want them to be sitting on your project because we're tracing onto the back of that um, fusible webbing paper just remember to reverse everything that we're adding here today so um, because it's very frustrating when you forget and you, you cut them out the wrong way. So a couple of other things we'll need we will be needing embroidery thread you can use uh, stranded cotton if you like I'll be using my usual extra strong thread and some perlay thread as well or pearl thread whatever you like to call it uh, we also need some clear craft glue which I have here something nice and quick drying and suitable for fabric so I'm going to get that first little chimney piece pressed into place so there you can see that I've got my first little chimney piece on and I've pressed that one on and I've just taken that to my machine, machine and I've just stitched around that top edge. This edge will be covered by our next pieces. Now you don't have to stitch around those outer edges, anything that's on the outer edge. We're going to be sewing the back to the front with a blanket stitch with our pearl thread or our embroidery thread. But I like to do that little stitching because it stops those little edges pulling up while we're working on that, those front pieces. And also it gives me a little guideline for when I do go to sew my blanket stitch. So totally up to you whether you do that. Um, so from there, our next step is to add our front little house front piece. You can see maybe I hope you can see what I've done is I've, I've just dropped that piece to just sit just below that edge so that little bit of green felt is just barely showing there uh, the reason for that is it just stops again those edges buffing up and and fraying out so I'm going to press that one into place in the same way with a hot iron and a protective cloth and then I'm going to add my my little trim that I want to have peeking out from under my roof top line there. So I'm going to be adding that little red strip over the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and just stitch a piece that way and a piece that way of my little trim. And then I will press that little roof piece straight over the top before I do any further stitching. And now I have my little roof line in with that little lace peeking out there. And you can see that I've just stitched around that entire piece there that holds everything into place, gives you a nice neat finish. 
Now our next piece to go on is our little door but to do that we need to just drop in our little skirting piece that lines up with the edge here right there on that corner and you want the little door to tuck in just underneath that piece. You also want to leave enough room because your step is going to sit directly below that door and you want to leave enough room on the side here to add your little pot plant. So don't have it too far over here and we also need to do some stitching along here as well. So I'm going to just shift that over just a little bit, give myself a little bit more room and once you've got that all lined up you can remove the other pieces, get that little door pressed on and then you go ahead and you can press your window in place and line it up with the top of the door. So these are the pieces we're doing next and you can also go ahead and add your little top window as well. Make sure that's all lined up and that sits nicely. If you lined it up with the bottom of that little roof frame, it tends to look best. So we can get those pressed on. And then I'm going to stitch around. I'm going to use matching thread, stitch around each of those window frames and that little door frame. And I'm also going to stitch down the sides of my little house here. So that has my door and windows stitched on and of course you could sew these on by hand using a blanket applique stitch if you like. I like the machine work because it keeps it all so nice and flat and tidy um, and when we're going to be adding that back piece it's much better if we've got less bulk. You can also see that with those two side uh, sides of that little house there I've switched to a little tight zigzag stitch right on that edge and the reason for that is those are our external edges and when we fold this one over to create our little needle book I don't want a raw edge there so that keeps it nice and tidy and uh, and this whole little book looks so fabulous because it's just so crisp so our next step is to add our next pieces. So our next pieces to go on are our skirting, which remember lines up with that little corner there and it presses over the base of that door. And then we add our little steps, which line up with the top of that skirting. Just make sure that it's centered over the door. And then we add our little grass piece. Now you can see that the top edge of that grass, when I've cut that one out, I've actually cut the top edge with my pinking shears, which is really handy because it gives us that little grassy look. And so that one then goes over the top of the little stairs. So we get that little layered look. And depending on where you put your, where you are planning on putting your kitty, your kitty can really go anywhere. But I'm going to actually just tuck my little kitty just under the grass there by the step. So he will go on before the grass goes on. So it's just a matter of remembering which pieces have to overlap. Um, you could put Kitty up here if you like, or, or, or the other side. You might not put a little pot plant in. It's totally up to you. Uh, that's where I'm going to situate my little Kitty. So I'm going to get those pieces pressed on, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do my stitching in, in my coordinating threads, and across the line of the step here, I'm going to create a little step going straight across as well. And then you can go ahead and add your pieces for your little window panes. And we've got them in our door. Just make sure they're all nicely centered. Get those all pressed on. And our little four pieces here. Take your time to measure them. I actually press them on one at a time so that I get them all in the right position. So once they're all in place and you've done your stitching and we can also, after you've done that, you can add your little pot plant if you wish. Just tuck that in somewhere. You can line it up with the top line if you like. You can drop it down a little lower. Entirely up to you. 
So I'm going to get those all pressed into place and continue on with my very clean, neat machine stitching. So that has all of my pieces on my front and all nicely stitched into place. You can see I've added my little pot there and then I've gone ahead and stitched back and forth about four times to create that little brown stalk that's ready for what will be my little plant. Now we add this at the end, but this will just show you how that looks. So that's my little fabric yo-yo and it will be attached with a little button there. And the reason why I put it there and put it on last is it will just overlap that little edge there and it will break up the straight look of that edge when we're all done and it will agree with this side. So you just need your little fabric. Yo, you also need your button there. This is for actually doing up our little needle book. Um, so we have one on that side and we have one on the other one as well. I'll show you that then. So you can add, you could add a little name of your little house here. There's so many things that you could do. Um, any kind of little text or words would look lovely there. So let me just show you if you haven't made a fabric yo-yo before. So this one is for the inside of the book. So all I've done is I've taken my extra strong thread and I've sewn a running stitch all the way around the outside of the right side of that little circle and left my tail ends hanging. And then we can just pull those gathers up right in. Just play with those little tucks. Pull that right in and tie that off three or four times, nice and tight, snip those thread ends. And I even give them a press so they're nice and flat. Um, and then we center them with a button as we will with this one here. So now that we have that one all done, we can pop that one aside and we're going to start work on the inside of our little needle book. And it's lovely to see it all coming together. So we're going to begin with the first fabric piece here. So we'll move everything else out of the way. We need to remember that we're going to be adding a piece across the top there. So you can see we've got our little heart on there. So you need room for that little heart. You can see where that little fabric piece sits just up from the base. Lay out all your pieces so you know where everything is where you want it to be. There's no real rules with this. Um, but just make sure you're going to have a little tag hanging down here. So leave some room and uh, just get that one pressed into place because that has your fusible webbing on the back. Press that one into place and then I will just stitch down in a matching thread those lower edges on the machine. So that has my little, um, my first little fabric piece stitched into place. My next step is to add my, the first of my little hearts. Now I'm not pressing these on because I don't want to compress the felt. So I've just used a tiny bit of craft glue, just a little bit on the back to pop that first one down. Make sure that you check the positioning because you're going to have your little piece across the top there. And then I'm going to add my second heart and I've just added some clear craft glue just around the outside edge. And I'm just going to pop that one straight over the top. I'm just going to make sure that it is all lined up well. And I'm just going to press those edges down into place and let that one dry before we're going to do our stitching around it. So now I've got my little heart is all dry there. Now you can see that by just by adding that little tiny bit of glue and not using our iron, we've got that lovely little uh, volume to that heart. So it's gonna take on our pins and needles beautifully for storage. So now I'm just gonna use my pearl thread and I'm gonna go for the blue, keeping in with all of my colors. And I've got a single strand and I've got a knot in the end and I've just come in from behind and right on the edge there. Now this is a blanket applique stitch that I'm going to be sewing. If you haven't done one before, I'm gonna put a link up the top there for you. I've got a video that shows you exactly how to show to sew this stitch, um, but I'll do a couple here. So let's start, and I'm keeping my stitches quite small. Probably about four millimeters.
and we go through all of the layers and come out right on that edge again and we bring our needle out through the loop and that creates our first stitch. So keeping my stitches nice and even, coming out, taking some of that underneath fabric, there's a few layers there for me to get through. And my needle coming out through that loop each time. Pulling that one in. That's going to give us a lovely little binding decorative edge. You could of course just stitch this on the machine if you would prefer but this is a little opportunity for me to add a little bit more detail with that contrasting colour. And I'm just going to make my way around that entire little shape, making sure that I rotate my work as I go so my stitches are going outwards all the time. So I'm just going to finish up that whole little shape. Now once you have that little heart shape stitched into place there, our next step is to add our little strip across the top there and that is just a piece of double felt. I've gone ahead and just stitched my lace on there down the centre. You could use anything at all. You could use a, a piece of rickrack, um, any kind of pretty little braid. And I've just tucked those edges under. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this one. And we're just going to be stitching. Now we're going to need a little bit of room here because we're going to be adding a button this side because we're going to hang our little tag here and we just need something the other side to balance it out so you can go ahead and use another button I'm actually just going to pop a little flower there so you can use whatever pretty little notions that you have and uh, and that will stitch that into place but I will first stitch either side and then I'm going to stitch equal thirds so straight down, what that will give me is a little pocket in the centre and either side to be able to tuck things in there. Um, so it, I'm just going to do it in a matching thread and mark that out with my ruler and have that one all stitched into place. So leaving that base open so that everything can tuck in there nicely. So that has completed our right hand side. We're going to add our little tag last. So our next step is to move over to the left hand side and I've taken my first little piece of uh, my little house shape and you can see that I've just lined that up with the top point there. I've also lined it up with this piece here and pressed that one into place. So I'm then going to stitch right the way around that piece just with a matching thread and then I'm going to add my little piece of double felt right across the centre there and I'm just going to stitch very close to the edge either side of it in a matching thread and that's our little felt bar to accommodate our pins and needles again. So I'm going to get those both all stitched out nicely into place. So now we have our little, our little needle bank there nicely in place and our next step is going to be preparing our final pocket. So. This is a little pocket that we're going to have sitting across here. We're going to divide it in half. You could um, make more pockets if you like. And now here's where you get to have a little bit of a play with trims and more importantly, buttons. And I have a confession to make. I have a bit of an obsession with buttons and I collect them, I have literally thousands and thousands of buttons. I find them absolutely irresistible. It's quite a dangerous addiction for me, but I laugh in the face of danger. So I continue to collect and, um, and I'm never sorry. So what you can do here is really, this little project really likes buttons. It just, it looks so sweet. You can add as many as you like. You can add now to what we've already done here, all sorts of little, in, in little ways, even just, you know, a couple of buttons here and there. 
can make all the difference. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding my little yo-yo on one side. You can see I've stitched a line of rickrack across the top, which I will just tuck in there. And I'm just going to add three delightful little buttons there in the corner. Now I'm keeping them away from the edges so that I can still machine that pocket into place. And I'm also going to be sewing that pocket straight through the center. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and sew on my little buttons, my little yo-yo, ready for that pocket placement. I have my pocket with all its little details all done and I'm ready to stitch that one into place. And I do try and line it up the same with the other side and just right in the center there. So you can see I'm just going to stitch down the lower edges and then I'm going to make that pocket divider in the center. I've just lightly drawn that in there so that I've got a stitching guide. I now have all of my stitching completed on my little interior and now what I did with the tag I can show you there is I've just pressed on my little heart and I've stitched using that same blanket applique stitch that I used on the heart here just in a contrasting thread I ended up adding my little word joy to the tag I think it's absolutely pretty with that on there um, and of course you can add little buttons notions little ribbons anything you like and I have then gone ahead and just sewn a small little blanket stitch around that outside edge and I've just added a little string of the pearl thread that I'm going to be using to sew around the entire project. So that one is going to be hanging from that little button there and we can hang a couple of little safety pins and so on which we'll do at the end. So do whatever you like with that little tag but you can see it just really adds that little pop of colour there. So our next step is to go ahead and we're going to join our front and our back together. I've also added the second button. So we have a button on the front there, just match up on the other side, same size little button in exactly the same position and we're all ready. So all we need to do is match those up exactly where we want them. Now you can see that I've drawn a, a center line from that point. Make sure that it is centered. This is the line that we're going to be stitching before we add our little card supports. So what I like to do is just add a little bit of craft glue either side of that line, of that central line. It's just enough to hold it while I stitch it. So I'm not gluing the line itself, just to either side of it, and not too much. And that allows me to line that one up exactly, press that into place. I will leave that for a few minutes to dry and then I will stitch that center line, making sure that I back and forth at the start and finish. Right, so now I have my center seam stitched in. So these two pieces, I know they're not gonna move and that's centered that nicely. It means that when we fold that book, we can give it a good press and that will make a good seam. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I've just glued and pressed into place my first um, middle support and you can see that I've left plenty of room around the outside edge because we're going to be sewing a blanket stitch around. So that one is just lightly glued, pressed into place. And then we're going to do the same with this one. I've already got the glue on there. Flip that one over and I'm just going to do the same and line that one up. Give myself plenty of room for stitching. press that one into place. I'm then going to glue that whole surface and flip this top layer over. And I'm going to do the same with that one. And I'm gonna make sure that I get all of my edges and everything's pressed nice and flat. We're going to let that dry and then we can uh, come back and do our final stitching. Once you have your uh, little needle cover, 
is all dry we're going to go ahead and do our final stitching and you can see that I've now added my little uh, top of my plant here and the way that I've done that because I don't want to go through all of the layers and have my stitching show here all I've done is taken a double thread of extra strong thread and I've actually gone through the button through that little yo-yo taken up a bit of the fabric on the front only of this part and come back through and tied that one off so now that one's securely into place there you can see when we fold that one up we get that lovely little uh, plant just popping out the side there so now we're ready to sew our blanket stitch all the way around so we're just going to go right the way now you could do this on the machine you could take it to the machine and sew a straight stitch all the way around if you want to make these for markets and you're most welcome to make and sell from my patterns um, I wish you every success with that you may want to speed up the process by doing that on the machine I like the finish of the little blanket stitch the way that it really binds those edges but you can see because of the way that we do it it's really quite neat and tidy so and because this is felt fabric you'll get a uh, very little fraying there so but what I've started here is I've just gone in I've got I'm using my because I couldn't choose a color I've decided to go with a multi colored in my colors that I'm using um, thread to finish this off you could alternatively change your thread colors all the way around but what you have to remember is what you're sewing on this side is also going to be on this side so I, I think that this particular multi thread will work best and uh, also remember when you're making your blanket stitches be sure to make sure that you're going through we're going to do our first stitch here I've come in at the back and I've just hidden that knot in between those felt layers now I've come out right on that edge there between the two layers I'm going to make my first stitch you have to make sure that you're going straight through both those layers and you don't want to be going through at an angle because remember that this stitch is going to be as visible on the other side as it is on the front because it's a little book so through both layers and bring that needle out through the loop so it's just your standard blanket stitch if you haven't sewn one before I'm going to put a link up the top there for you and uh, you can check that out I have a video that shows you how to do it so my stitches are probably about four millimeters and I'm just going through those layers just as I said making sure I'm going straight through and pulling that needle through the loop each time pulling those stitches nice and firm too and do make sure while you're doing this one that you are just constantly checking from behind that your stitches are just as pretty from this side as they are from the front so you, all you need to do now is just continue around the entire outside edge of this one and then our final step would be just to add our little string and our tab and um, and it will be all done so I'm just going to keep working and I'm going to use my stitching lines here as a guide through these sections because I don't want to go deeper than those stitching lines and that has our little needle book completed you can see there I've got all of my stitching finished I've added my little wrap for my to go around my buttons I've just used my pearl thread just a double strand that I've tied up around that button and as you can see that just wraps around that one it's a very easy closure um, if you would rather have a ribbon closure when you glue your front to your back you can insert a little ribbon either side in where those buttons are and then you can have a little tie up this one holds it nice and firm though I'm very happy with that so you can see the end result is a lovely clean finish that variegated thread has actually worked really well so keep that one in mind when you're using multiple colors and of course on the inside we've got all of our little treats and treasures in there would be a beautiful gift to make up and add all sorts of little things little packets of needles and so on and uh, you could have little tiny embroidery scissors in there you can see I've just hung that little tag from that little button there and you can imagine what you could do with those I can't wait to see what you all do with this one and I want to see it in all sorts of themed prints 
I'm really looking forward to it. So I certainly hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this little project. It was very quick and easy, certainly a great one for craft markets um, and selling online. You are all most welcome to make up product with my patterns and sell that product. I wish you absolutely every success with that. Now, are you featured on my Pinterest board yet? If you are not, you should be, because I want to show off your work, everybody. So thank you to everybody who sent me pictures and come and have a look at that Pinterest board at Lisa Pay on Pinterest and you'll see it's called You Made It. And uh, it's just a fabulous board. It's very positive. By the same token, make sure that you're following me on Instagram so that you can see these projects coming together at their very beginnings and you can get all ready and you'll be ready ahead of the game before they uh, before they go up and you can have all your materials sorted so looking forward to so many more designs I'm definitely going to do more of these because there's so many shapes that have occurred to me since making this little one most of all I want everybody to stay safe and keep on being creative and all of those wonderful things that come to you in your day make sure that you pay them forward. And until next time, it's Huru from me.